market, or even as offered as a resource to the local utility. So what I pose is that what's occurring and what may occur uh, on the edge of the grid behind the meter is completely opaque to many utilities. So as you start to witness grid divorce, the utility all of a sudden is starting to show that customers are no longer consuming load and there is um, basically a reduction of, of, of base load requirement. But what happens if that particular customer uh, or those customers who are separating from the grid uh, realize that they like the grid and they want to stay connected to it because it's a great battery? And they say, you know what, I'm going to take my generator offline because it's time for maintenance. But they never alerted the utility that that generation capacity is going offline. They didn't have to. They're just, they're just connected to the grid. They're paying a connection fee. Well, all of a sudden, the utility witnesses an immediate instant load. So there's a reason why the utilities might be concerned about grid divorce. Because even though that load disappears, it may still be lurking in the background based on whatever the whims are of the customer. So in terms of um, the interest in, in creating this, this paradigm, this, this new change in the way in which we look at energy production, uh, I think it's incumbent upon the utilities to take a look at um, the, the activity that's actually taking place. Are there, the, are there facilities that are producing their own power and um, does the utility want to participate in that in any way? So if we look at the different types of uh, uh, businesses that would be interested, college campuses, we heard about them today. Business parks, certainly um, there's a certain level of uh, energy requirement that a, a business park would qualify for to make this a business case. Um, electric cooperatives all across North America. I think somebody said earlier yesterday that there's close to 3,200 uh, generating uh, utilities in the United States. About 2,500 of those are electric co-ops. Any one of those co-ops, if they come, have to fall under the, the mandate that there's a federal requirement for a renewable portfolio, they have to start thinking about a different way of their energy production. Today, they're probably using um, either natural gas or coal-fired uh, generation. Uh, if they have to um, add part of their portfolio using renewables, then they're going to be introducing some technique to manage a microgrid. Municipalities will fall under the same thing. Even though they're nonprofit, uh, they still have to comply with whatever the federal mandates are if that climate legislation is enacted. I already mentioned uh, the interest in uh, distribution utilities and then filing military bases. Uh, we know that uh, sustainability is really important for the federal government. They're looking right now at energy efficiency as the first easy solution to minimize their operational costs, but also they want to be sustainable uh, for a number of reasons. So as we start to delve into how do we turn this into a business opportunity, uh, we take a look at the collection of t technologies that uh, reside within the operation of a typical community. And, and this kind of de depicts um, some of those assets. Uh, we've, we've seen it all a, a number of times, but one of the things that this introduces is as we start to witness the emergence of self-generation and the utility wants to participate in this, uh, there's a great opportunity for the utility to install a larger collection of, of storage capacity that addresses a diverse number of needs. So finally, let's take this to the last step, the last phase of um, what could a new model look like for microgrids. If we take the premise to be true that end-use customers, business parks, college campuses, and so on, if we take that premise to be true that they will generate their own power and manage their power flow within themselves, and they happen to be adjacent to another community that wants to do the exact same thing. Take, for example, UCSD. They have a microgrid. Right across the highway, there's the UCSD medical facility. They've got lots of land. They could put a solar array and they could manage their own power. Right down the street is the UTC um, shopping mall. They've got a lot of rooftop. They could put their own power up. What if each of those decided that they wanted to transact amongst one another? Well, you can't do it today. It's illegal. But this is an opportunity. Even though regulatory change 
uh, would be required, this is a way in which we could create a brand new economy that would one day eliminate the monopoly. If, if there were interest to pursue microgrids on a large scale, really the relevance of the central generation utility becomes irrelevant. And this is the paradigm that I think uh, would really be interesting uh, to pursue and it's one that uh, I think that there is, is a way in which we could do this. So Audrey was talking about taking elements of uh, capacity from any one of those microgrids or a, a number of those microgrids and treat them as an aggregate into the bulk market. Well, instead of placing it into the bulk market, why not creating the market yourself? The utility could do that. The utility could actually be the market player here. They, the utility already has the distribution connections to each one of those facilities, but currently the regulation doesn't allow that. So what I'm um, posing uh, as an intellectual exercise here is to think about a way in which we can transform our industry from having franchises where you have very fixed territorial regions that every utility has control over, has that monopoly, move from that paradigm into one where you have a completely open and free market. I mean, one of the challenges we have today, and we saw the cost of energy per unit in many, many slides, but one of the challenges we have today is, is that the right price? Is that what I should be paying for my energy? From the utilities perspective, they have to solve a social good. That is, there's a lot of rate payers who can afford to pay for electricity, and they pay it. They look at their bill, oh, that's what I have to pay, that must be the worth of it, so I pay my bill. There are a lot of customers in their territory that are economically uh, challenged, and so they are entitled to energy, so they get a special rate or a special deal. But the energy still costs some money, so who gets to pay for that? Well, that gets disseminated amongst all of you who aren't economically challenged. Now what happens, let's add to that concept, now what happens when the universities say, hey, I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build my own power plant, and I'm gonna separate from the grid, and the business park separates from the grid, and more and more of those separate from the grid, and us that are left connected to the grid, we're, who, who's paying for their lack of connection? We're gonna see the cost of energy rise exponentially as a result of potential grid divorce, and so what I'm arguing for the case for is coming up with a new mechanism, a new way of transacting energy production where we know what the value of energy is because if you have multiple suppliers to choose from, a, you know, neighbor A, neighbor B, neighbor C, or myself, then I really know what the commodity is worth because I can choose from different suppliers. Ultimately in this concept as we evolve it, um, if this reality comes true that I'm proposing, I think that the utilities will still have a, a role in the future, and that is they'll be wires companies. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense to lay a bunch of wires between a whole bunch of neighborhoods, but the utility itself, they can uh, kind of evolve into a new uh, operation, and we see that, that happen in Texas right now, right? Most of the utilities are distribution companies. What if that happened all across the United States where every utility became a wires company? They have you know, fixed rate of return, but really they didn't participate in the energy market, or perhaps even maybe they, they operated the, the transaction and settlement. P perhaps that's, that's a mechanism. But what I'm hoping to challenge you with is to say, is this a future? Is this one that we would want you know, here in the United States? And if so, how fast can we get there? That's the, I think that's the end of my, oh, there were a couple other attributes to this, um, but I think there was a question in the back before I get into this. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> at some, some intellectual level, everybody wants to be their own man, but um, the reality is, is that the way energy gets produced, at least conventionally, is it goes through a huge societal system of manufacturing and energy extraction. And I mean, there's just a whole lot of stuff hanging on the backside of a utility facility that extracts all that stuff and brings it to market. So now, 
everybody is kind of looking back and hoping they could have a little village and a little solar panel and you know run their own show and that is in so many ways the wrong model because what we need more of is integrative and cooperative behavior within a larger distributed system because with diffuse and low energy density sources you have to be able to share them more completely than you would if you have highly concentrated sources that can then be sort of run in in a system so at one level that's, the way that's you, you know that that argument has been used over and over for the last you know 50 years by the utilities yeah, I, I don't I, I argue understand. i don't argue that people think that that's true uh, but, but let me just continue for just a second here. The, um, the, the, I'm not a shill for anybody on this. I don't really you know, care at some level. But the operational reality of getting a lot of little fiefdoms is that you have a lot of problems that that generates. I mean, multiplicity creates problems in and of itself. Every manufacturer yeah. will tell you. And if you listen to some of the answers to questions that people asked and answered was they needed to control the system like the manufacturer needs to control in a vertically integrated sense and mm -hmm. and what's happening with storage is really to control a lot of internal variability because the physics directs that okay your, your point is that this is a bad model this is there's not a model that you would recommend I think it's too I, this is an alternative model that's my position position I understand that but what I'm saying is is it's ice instead of cooperation and collaboration and bringing people together to solve a problem it's isolationist and it seems fine it's kind of like I'll, I'll run my fiefdom but the reality is we have a a national system and a you know geographic system that really needs to integrate we have I, I argue that we have a flawed system and that system is flawed for a number of reasons. One is that we continue to belch out smoke in all of our factories. Our prices are continuing to go up. They're controlled by localized monopolies that do not allow for easy in integration and implementation of innovation. Okay. So I think there are op options for uh, another model. Maybe you're right. Maybe we'll have a lot of different fiefdoms. But I think the market will manage that in a sane way. Yes, sir. Um, Terry, uh, great presentation. Thank you. I, I wanted to, to see if I uh, could get a clarification. This uh, multiplicity of fiefdoms, um, I, I think it's an incredibly intriguing idea as far as the, the, the explosion of microgrids. <laughs> um, but I didn't see that as being exclusive of the larger infrastructure where you could do uh, energy trading also. So it, right. I, what I understood, and you tell me if I have it wrong, is it would increase price competitiveness and, and actually, in a way, insulate that's, the that's, grid. That's the whole point, is we don't know what the cost of energy is. It's, it is whatever our bill tells us the cost of energy is. So yes, there, there's, there could be an open market. And you would essentially, um, is it correct, it would give you the benefit of, of having some sort of insulation so you don't have a system failure as a you reduce the likelihood of that, Would that well be? remember some customers are going to pursue this path with or without a change in paradigm customers will want to have highly reliable generation because they can't depend on the utility a lot of data center operators are thinking that way in, in the case of some end use customers they want fixed costs over 20 years the university, for example. They don't like this rising cost. It's too unpredictable. Their budgets are eroding. Their costs are going up. They need to stabilize something. So there will be a segment of the market that will head in this general direction, even though there's no open market. They're going to head in a direction where it's going to exacerbate the cost of energy for everybody else. That, that's kind of the point.